What up? It's Matt. Welcome to Talk About Potato Mustang. Um, I think I mentioned this in my last garage vlog, but uh, one thing that I was I've been considering doing is putting this. It's a uh, Apeman or Ape Man C860 dash cam. It's got a front and rear camera. This is the front and this is the rear and i used it a couple times in the black car for the most part it fit okay but the problem is that it um, because of the way the combination of the way this camera functions and the power outlet on the on the dude's thing 2014 mustang uh it wasn't ideal so i'm going to try and see if it will um work with the fox mustang and uh, you might notice that the uh, hood is up on the Fox, which obviously isn't necessary for a dash cam installation. Um, that's because I was planning on draining the coolant here uh, to get started on some of the cooling system updates, but I only have this one drip pan that's available right now. Um, so I, I <laughs> you might notice I wrote, need more drip pans and buckets. Uh, so I need something, I need an empty bucket uh, and maybe another drip pan or two so that I ha make sure I'm not uh, draining coolant all over the floor of the garage um, when I start working on that stuff. So instead of uh, going to the hardware store, which we've already done twice today for things related to our back deck, I uh, am gonna try and accomplish something else to just see if the uh, if that dash cam will work with the Fox, maybe take it for a quick drive, uh, get some footage, and then um, maybe while I'm on that drive, I can grab some, uh, some buckets or drip pans. So, yeah. My plan already appears to be failing because it looks like the light just came on, although it went off, weird. It's going on and off um, with the uh, power source for the dash cam in the power outlet cigarette lighter thing. I don't know. Uh, maybe I will, uh, I'm not sure if this camera angle is ideal, but maybe I'll just plug in the camera and see if it actually turns on. Damn it. So as you can see, the camera is recording. So my idea did not work already and it's been about three minutes. It's gotta be a setting where you just like, the camera only turns on when the car ignition is on or something. I don't know. It just started recording again and I didn't even press anything. Come on. In case that's not obvious, I'm not in the Fox Mustang. I'm uh, trying to avoid getting too many oil stains in my driveway. So I'm gonna take the dude saying to the store. <laughs> thing I uh, am still getting used to in uh, going back and forth between driving the Mustangs and driving the, uh, the Subaru Forester is the um, so like obviously the Forester is a newer car and has all sorts of safety tech which I will uh, go into detail on when I do my in-depth Subaru Forester review video at some point um, but the uh, it has a thing that monitors your uh, your like your face or your eyes essentially uh, kind of beeping at you whenever you're not um, whenever you're not uh, looking at the road so uh, when I'm I feel like when I'm 
I have mixed thoughts on that uh, feature, but I feel like when I'm driving the Subaru, I'm like hyper alert um, about uh, making sure that I'm paying attention to where I'm going. And that's kind of uh, found its way to, people driving in the middle of the road, um, that's kind of found its way to uh, my my habits when I'm driving the other cars is that I forget that I'm in one of the Mustangs and I'll, I won't be looking at the road for a second. Like, you know, I'll look at something to the side of me or, or whatever. And I'll, I'll catch myself like, Oh, I'm not looking, I'm not looking straight ahead. I'm not looking at the road. And then I have to remind myself that I'm not in the Subaru and that it's not going to beep at me. It's not, I think I've gotten used to it now. It's not as, uh, it's surprising when it happens in the, when that happens in the Subaru, but it's funny, kind of funny going between the um, the different cars and then the things that you. Um, I'm sure anybody who owns more than one vehicle, uh, especially when there's a significant year gap between the vehicles, understands that uh, you know some things you. Uh, it takes some getting used to getting back and forth in and out of different cars, uh, but it's uh, it's kind of a funny thing that I've been noticing more so probably the last couple of weeks as I've actually been trying to drive them uh, both the Mustangs uh, at least a couple times a week just to make sure they're not just sitting there in the garage. I uh, got a couple things in the auto zone. I got in the zone, was auto zone or whatever. Um, they're in the trunk, so I'll have to uh, share that in a minute. So I've been thinking, uh, spending a lot of time the last few days daydreaming, brainstorming, trying to figure out uh, what I want to uh, buy for both cars. I think if you watch my last video, that's pretty much what I was blabbering on about. But uh, one thing I've been considering, this is kind of funny because I, so part of the reason why I switched from the Roush exhaust on this car to the um, GT500 exhaust is that the Roush is pretty loud. I love the way it sounded, uh, but it's pretty loud and uh, it had quite a bit of drone, especially when you're driving on the highway. And uh, I do like the way the GT500 sounds a lot, um, uh, but I'm, but I'm like, now that we have the uh, the Forester, I'm like, oh, well, you know, I, we don't when we take longer trips or uh, when we go um, run errands and stuff, we usually take um, the uh, the Subaru for obvious reasons. It's more fuel efficient, it's more comfortable, uh, it's got more space. And um, the, so now obviously we're not using this car as much. And I'm like, I don't think I, I wanna go back to the Roush exhaust necessarily, but I, I was considering um, adding over the axle pipes um, because the ones that uh, th that's the pipe that, for folks who are not familiar with Mustangs, it's the pipe that uh, connects from like the from the X pipe in the middle uh, to the, and then it, it comes over the axle and it connects to what Mustang folks call axle backs, which really they're mufflers uh, with like a few inches of the. Um, of the of that connects it to of piping that connects it to the exhaust. Uh, so um, I've the stock axle or over the axle pipes are a little bit restricted in terms of like uh, they're kind of they have like a resonator and then they're also kind of like I think in a, I think at least on one side the the pipe is kind of flattened out. Um, and I've I've read and seen some videos where people. Um, have the over the the either a set of over the axle pipes from 
the GT500 or uh, from the um, like from one of the companies that makes a set of aftermarket parts like um, Borla or I think Lethal Performance makes one. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a set of those uh, to, make the, to make the exhaust a little bit louder, give it a little bit more uh, um, snap, crackle, pop, which I assume would not be as loud as having the, um, the straight through design on the... Um, on the Roush mufflers, but I don't know. It seems like, again, I always run to this, uh, this, I overthink it, but it's, um, how, do you, how much money do you want to pay for a part that isn't really going to add any performance? But again, I think when it comes to things like sound, uh, you obviously want your car to sound the way that you want it to sound. And then also like, you know, things like your shifter, your shift knob, steering wheel um you know things that make the driving experience more enjoyable for you i think sometimes it, it's it's fine to make that um to you know to pay those costs because you know at the end of the day you want to enjoy driving your car and while you know a lot of these companies make awesome cars you know they there's certainly things you can upgrade and make better so um anyways let's uh take a look at some of the stuff that i just picked up stand by so i got one normal size drip pan the camera needs to be cleaned off uh one mega size drip pan extra mega size drip pan uh, a large drip tray is actually what it's called so what I was thinking is that this drip tray could go underneath the Fox um, right, now, right now I have uh, this pad and then I have there's like another kind of cloth um, almost like a rug type thing and then of course I have my standard cardboard box that I, whenever I get uh, something huge in the mail, I uh, grab a box and I can throw under here to take up some of the, some of the oil leaks and whatever else is leaking, I'm assuming just coolant and oil. So that was like 10 bucks. Um, I had never seen one of those at at least not when I went to AutoZone. So um, I can throw that under there and get rid of the uh, cardboard. So that's a good pickup. Nice job, AutoZone. Okay, right, first thing I'm gonna do is drain the coolant in the, um, into my new giant bucket pan thing. The coolant is starting to drain. I'd be very interested in seeing if that new bucket combination drain pan thing holds all of the coolant. We'll see. It's still draining. So while we're waiting on this draining, I guess I should talk a little bit about the plan, at least the plan in theory. So this whole thing started because my uh, lower, uh, you can see it, that hose down there, uh, my lower radiator hose, was showing a slight leak. Um, I think noticed that when we were installing the um, 
when we were installing the power steering pump uh, a few months back. And so I was like, all right, should probably replace that hose, which naturally turned into gonna replace all the hoses, which turned into gonna replace all the hoses, the water pump and the coolant overflow tank and the um, thermostat. Uh, so that's why we're here now. But I, uh, I have to be completely honest, as I'm looking at the water pump, I'm, I'm a little intimidated, um, but maybe, uh, maybe I'll find some confidence along the way. We'll see. For a minute, I was thinking I should uh, just do the hoses and then not worry about the water pump for now. But, you know, if my plan is to do like one element or one system at a time, I should, you know, I should do the whole thing, right? Like I want to address the cooling system. So I should do the cooling system. And then from there, uh, I'll probably move to the, uh, um, to the undercarriage and see what we can figure out as far as the oil leaks go. But uh, I don't know, we'll see how this goes. So now I'm going to attempt to uh, un unhook the lower radiator hose. I don't know if this is a good idea yet, but I guess we'll find out. reminded that uh well i in my head <laughs> it just reoccurred to me that somebody who commented on one of my videos uh probably when we did the power steering pump had said something about getting a uh a hose removal tool and i made a mental note of that obviously didn't make a a reminder note of that because i do not have a hose removal tool and this hose for the radiator appears to have been in place for an extremely long time. So might have to take another trip to AutoZone. Of course, of course. So I can't get the bottom hose off, part of the bottom radiator hose off because I don't have a hose removal tool. And the top part, the hose clamp is not loosening the way it's supposed to. So now I'm, I guess I'm just gonna try the top radiator hose, see if I can make a little progress, and then uh, maybe try and get a hose removal tool or something, I don't know. So this is the new thermostat housing that's gonna be going there. And as you can see, it's uh, in a little bit better shape than the existing one. Um, I do think I need to get some um, Permatex or whatever it's called uh, for when I, I have a gasket, but uh, it seems like I might need something to make sure that it's uh, um, sealed correctly. And also you can see the um, various elements of the water pump that are rusted and have seen better days. And let's see. And this is the new AC Delco water pump. Yeah, that should. Uh, Go in real nice if we can get this all figured out. What up? 
So next day, eating some pretzels, just got back from AutoZone where I found a double offset hose remover. I'm not really sure what the double offset thing means, but I'm gonna use this to uh, try and get the bottom um, radiator hose off. Hopefully it works. That uh, hose removal tool was impressively effective. Um, I was able to get the bottom part of the uh, of the uh, of the lower radiator hose off pretty quickly. Only took a couple minutes. So whoever it was that recommended that, good call. I should have acknowledged that. Bit of advice, followed that bit of advice a lot, um, a lot sooner. Now I just got to figure out how I'm going to get the, uh, get room to the um, top part of that hose, or space to get into the top part of that hose. I got the uh, lower radiator hose out. This side was the one where I had to use the, uh, um, hose removal tool but this side as soon as I was able to get the clamp off it came off I was able to just pull it off by hand so that's good now I think I'm gonna um, see about removing these hoses but I also need to uh, um, see about getting the belt off and uh, removing the, I'm not sure exactly how I remove the fan um, from the, uh, from the water pump, but um, I'll do a little bit of internet searching and figure that out. Okay, I didn't really record any of this, but I did manage to get these two hoses out. Um, it took quite a bit of uh, elbow grease, um, twisting them around a little bit, and I did use the um, the hose removal tool on one of them. The other one, it was too hard to get in there, so I used a flathead screwdriver. Um, and these are the hoses that I just pulled out. Um, also, I dropped my um, tiny flathead screwdriver while I was unscrewing the hose clamp on the first one of those hoses, and it's now somewhere uh, somewhere around the passenger side exhaust manifold and or um, control arm. I can't I can't see I can't find it. I just made a note to myself to make sure I don't forget to grab it because I have no idea where it is. Um, anyways, this is already shaping up to be a pretty long video, so um, I'll probably start the next part of this with uh, um, any work, any progress that I make on getting the um, belt removed and uh, getting the fan disconnected from the water pump um, but I imagine this will take a few videos to document the process, uh, assuming I can get it all done. So anyways, if you're, uh, still with me, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm pretty excited to make some progress, some more progress on the Fox. Uh, I, th I do think as I've been, um, kind of poking around underneath, I, I'm becoming increasingly tempted to go ahead and get a transmission jack. Um, and, uh, I mean, well, I guess I should just start by, uh, uh, getting the car up as high as I can get it and then, uh, taking it, you know, cleaning up the undercarriage, cleaning up, probably remove the, uh, um, the X pipe and, um, take a look at the transmission and like, you know, the, where the transmission meets the engine, all that, and just see, um, what I need to do as far as whether I need to, I mean, I'm assuming I will, but whether I need to uh, drop the transmission, uh, replace the rear main seal, replace the clutch, et cetera, et cetera. So 
Anyways, keep an eye out for my next uh, installment of the Fox Mustang project, as well as um, fast food reviews, sandwich reviews, progress on the uh, dude staying over there, and uh, uh, maybe the occasional car review. So, hope you're staying healthy. Hope you're staying safe. Peace out. Peace out.